are delighted to collaborate with St. Fagans, learning about our past in a practical, explorative way. in time understanding Welsh heritage so that we can learn from our past. Where we came from and how life changed year to year, decade to decade, century to century. St Fagans has a special place in the heart of the people of Wales. It first opens its gates to us in July the 1st 1948. It was the UK's first open air museum. It was radical in its day because it reflected on the everyday lives of ordinary people Lisa Llewellyn Building it is a recreation of a royal court of the Princes of Gwynedd, used during the 13th century. It is based on the surviving remains of Fleece Rossa in the southwestern corner of Anglesey and excavated by the Gwynedd Archaeological Trust between 1992 and 1996. To aid with the reconstruction, detailed discussions have been held with experts in Welsh history as well as research into the surviving castles. The result will be the most accurate rendering of a Welsh royal feast to date. The place was the administrative centre of princely power in medieval Wales. None of these courts survive above ground, but I've known from their written records and archaeological excavations. During this time, Llewellyn Val, Llewellyn the Great, Prince of Wales, was considered to be Prince of the whole North. He would reside in courts like this. But why Llewellyn? What made him leader Prince of Wales? Why was he considered so successful? Let what happened begin it. Llewellyn Fowl was born in 1172 AD in Doldervelin Castle in the Gleader Valley, North Wales. He was ambitious from an early age, keen to take land and gain power. In 1194, Llewellyn led a successful takeover against his uncle David and defeated him in the Battle of Aberconway. There was no room for family ties. In 1197, Llewellyn, having captured and imprisoned David, banished him to the border in Ellesmere. In the year 1200, Squithead died at Aberconway. Llewellyn felt he had now had the power to move against Mafev, expelling him from Flee. Now having captured the castle at Mould, he now called himself Prince of the Horn of the North. There was no stopping him. Llewellyn was both courageous and gutsy. He next invaded southern powers, the territory of Gwenwyn. By now, Llewellyn understood the importance of suitable alliances and political gain. In 1205, King John offered Llewellyn his daughter in marriage. This was a brilliant move. In 1207, the king arrested Gwen Winwin, allowing Llewellyn to take yet more land, taking southern Powys and northern Ceredigion. He rebuilt the Aberystwyth Castle. Llewellyn was becoming stronger and stronger. As Llewellyn gained more power, King John questioned their alliance. In 1210, Llewellyn attacked the lands of Earl of Chester, provoking war between King and Llewellyn. King John's army were heading for De Ganry, but Llewellyn was smart and he made a tactical move, retreating to the hills with all the food. King John was forced to return to England for fear of starving in Wales. King John did not give up. He was back in Wales within three months with an even greater army. This time he was fully provisioned, but instead of heading to Daganwy, he decided to cross the Calmwy River, higher up in the valley. 
This time the king and his army took over the Welsh royal palace, Garth Kelly. He and his army went on to beat Bangor, cutting him straight into the heart of Gwynedd. This threatened Llewellyn and his power. Llewellyn was left with no choice but to send his wife Joan to seek peace on any terms. In this settlement, Llewellyn lost the right to lands east of Conwy River. He was also made to forfeit 20,000 cattle and 40 horses to the English. King John became overconfident, ordering the Viscount of Cardiff to take the castle at Aberystwyth with English troops. This act threatened the Welsh, who were hoping that the king would retreat back to England. The Welsh came together under the rule of Llewellyn, capturing all English forts, including the castles of Deganry and Reith Lan. By 1214, King John found himself in serious trouble. English barons were plotting against him. He surprisingly turned to the Welsh for support. They refused to help him. King John fell firmly out of favour and in courts like this, Hlees Llewellyn building, we see a change in history, a significant move to Magna Carta. The reign of King John was a turning point in the history of England government. The barons said no to the king and made him do what they wanted. This charter spoke about free men. No monarch of England had ever had unrestricted or absolute power again. But back to our Prince Llewellyn, Aware of the king's situation, he captured Shrewsbury and moved into South Wales. By 1215, he captured South Wales, turning north into mid, taking over Cardigan and Kilgarran. Yet again, Llewellyn understood the importance of a beneficial friendship. In 1216, he made a new alliance with one of the powerful Anglo Norman Marcher families by marrying one of his daughters. Welsh and Anglo-Normans ensured peace on the borderlands for some time. When King John died in 1216, this Prince Llewellyn made a new friendship with the new King Henry of the Third. Llewellyn Val was now 44 years old. He learned through his troubled life the importance of diplomacy and he used all his skills to create a government that enabled peace to flourish. Instead of the troubles of the past, Llewellyn called a parliament at Abu Dhabi and treated the districts of Wales with all the princes and overlords who helped him in his battles, keeping for himself overlord of all. A smart move. Life of Llewellyn, however, was never easy. He was in dispute with the Earl of Pembroke for many, year, many of his later years. After the capture of Cardigan and Carmarthen, Llewellyn sent his son Gruffy to regain territory. The attack failed and the fallout continued for many years. In 1934, they colluded to attack the new King Henry III. Truth was agreed to allow Llewellyn to live a relatively peaceful life until his death at age 68 in 1240. Llewellyn died at the Abbey of Abercombe, which he had founded, and he was buried there. And so we conclude the story of Llewellyn Val, a leader, a politician, a diplomat and a prince. Ruler of all the